Joy Base Lewis McCord lies 40 miles to the south of Seattle. It houses the headquarters of the I Corps, a formation of the U.S. Army that commands nearly 20,000 soldiers. Along with the Washington National Guard and State Guard, the I Corps is the force that will be used to crush any future rebellion in the region. So in order to do their job, they depend on the cooperation of local, state, and federal agencies to do what we do. Twenty miles to the south of the base is Olympia, the capital of Washington State. From here, the laws and policies of the state government are decided. Within their Roman temple, the politicians spend all winter allocating money to the bureaucratic apparatus that maintains the functioning of the Washington economy. The state patrol is the police force that protects state assets and maintains an armed presence on its roads. Above them in the hierarchy is the Department of Homeland Security. This department of the federal government has an office in the suburb of Tukwila and its local employees conduct numerous operations in the region. Its primary objectives are to prevent terrorist attacks, respond to natural or human-created disasters, and deport illegal immigrants. The main courthouse of the federal government is located downtown near 7th and Stewart. At this location, thousands of people are convicted of federal crimes and sentenced to years in prison. The functionaries at this courthouse care little about the humans who are ruined inside the courtrooms. The armed employees that guard the building are largely pathetic men who are paid to look threatening. Like all agents of the federal government, they are parasites and killers tasked with policing the thoughts and actions of the U.S. population. Um, as I've said before, these are incredibly challenging times for the FBI. Nerve centers like this one help you share intelligence, answer questions, and give support instantly. People like him are often seen on the streets of downtown. They don't merely share space. They share databases and techniques. How much stronger all of you can be when you're actually working together. That's the logic behind what are called fusion centers. State intelligence centers called fusion centers. Can you tell us a little bit more what the fusion center fuses? It's the Homeland Security, the FBI, the Seattle Police Department, Fire Department. Um, really a collaboration that we haven't seen before. There are federal buildings scattered throughout downtown, most of them anonymous. This is one of those invisible buildings, hidden right beside the King County Correctional Facility. This jail has a monthly population of around 2,000 prisoners. Large segments of the Seattle population have spent days and weeks and months in the county jail, cursed to watch the world from up high through narrow windows. They are guarded, abused, tortured, and taunted by over 300 King County Corrections officers and other employees. The jail is connected to the King County Administrative Offices by a windowless sky bridge that hangs over Fifth Avenue. In this bizarre and sinister beehive, the vast area that makes up King County is overseen and governed by the County Council and various other departments. Nearly two million people live in the county, and all of them are forced to pay taxes to it. This money is then used to finance the prisons and the King County Sheriff's Department. Some of the prisoners that are brought into the jail are marched through the sky bridge across the administrative offices over 4th Avenue and taken to the King County Courthouse. Finished in 1916, this building houses the courtrooms for the County Superior Court. Every day, the County Prosecutor's Office works diligently to imprison or fine as many people as possible. On the streets of Seattle, dozens of sheriffs wander around looking for someone to hassle. These exceptionally stupid people are armed and extremely dangerous.
Most of them live in the suburbs of the metropolis and despise the people they police. These detestable people also guard the children locked up in the King County Youth Detention Facility. In this jail, hundreds of young people lose months and years of their childhood while locked in small cement rooms. The jail is located on 12th Avenue just south of Seattle University. The King County Council recently received enough votes to proceed with their plans to tear down the existing structure, sell off some of the county land to private developers, and build a new modern jail that will be integrated with high-end condominiums. Once this project is completed, the youth locked inside will even be more invisible than they are today. There is no hope within the jail, only pain and sadness, and sometimes rebellion. Young people all know about the jail, and one day, they will destroy it. The center of governments for the city of Seattle is the City Hall that is located across the street from the King County Administrative Offices. Inside the building, art reminiscent of the indigenous tribes is displayed for the public, symbolizing the desire of the government to forget the forcible relocation, the diseases, and the murders of the past. Within this transparent building, the City Council and the Mayor create laws to make business deals with investors. These people rule over Seattle, bringing all their psychological problems into the seats of power and arrogantly attempting to manage an unruly and chaotic population. They are too cowardly to admit the inherent failure of their project. There's the council members, community members, Let's do that. Let's just all jump off the cliff together. Across the street is the Seattle Municipal Court. It is here that the city of Seattle extracts millions of dollars in the population every year. People must pay for breaking the law in this horrid building. If they do not hand over their money to the city, their car will be taken away, or they will be imprisoned across the street at the county jail. Adjacent to the Municipal Court is the headquarters of the Seattle Police Department. From here, the department bureaucracy administers its 1,300 employees. The police officers often terrorize specific areas of Seattle. Sometimes there is a media scandal. There's really no excuse for how this came to be. You like telling those lies for uh, the police department, huh? It's very embarrassing. The SPD are the lowest level of governments, the military unit assigned to the task of keeping the population of the metropolis loyal to the government. They have divided up the city like a gang and assigned themselves different areas to police. Many of the officers use steroids or other drugs while working. Many of them are also ex-soldiers who have killed civilians in other countries. In August 2010, a white police officer stepped out of his car and then proceeded to execute a member of the new Chattanooth named John T. Williams. Williams had been carving a piece of cedar when he was killed. The police even regulate the water with their harbor patrol, spinning around in expensive boats and responding to every disturbance or violation. The SPT is now telling the population that they will introduce unmanned aerial vehicles into the sky above the metropolis. Little by little, the police attempt to assert their total control over the population. They are fully supported by the city government and the downtown businesses. It is in all of their interest to have a submissive and orderly population that will help them expand the economy. Luckily, there is always rebellion. The police panic, chaos blossoms, and this prison world promises to end. All that gives them power are the guns they carry on their sides and nothing else. These pathetic and desperate souls live off the people they police. They are a gang, the most powerful gang in Seattle. The mainstream media helps the police control the population by giving them a free conduit through which they can deceive the public. 
They will never condone illegality, nor will they call for the overthrow of the government. Instead, they will be the mouthpiece for ghouls like Sean Whitcomb, the silver-tongued apologist for murder, terror, and tyranny. Archaic as they are, the four major Seattle networks continue to dominate the minds of the public with their propaganda and lies. Ultimately, people in Metropolis are governed by themselves. The people who police the population are absurd, dangerous, and fully human. They regulate even the smallest acts of daily life and act with impunity whenever they see fit. But they are not invincible, nor are they very intelligent. They are as powerful as they are allowed to be. But it only takes the smallest of acts to begin bringing them down.